Dear Red, if you're reading this, you've come down. If you've come this far, maybe you're willing to come a little further. You remember the name of the town, don't you? Say what to Neil. I could use a good man to help me get my project on wheels. I'll keep an eye out for you, and the chessboard ready. Remember, Red, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. I will be hoping that this letter finds you, and finds you well. Percentage of international students 
Can you guess how much my family expected contribution was, EFC was, or how much my family was supposed to pay for my education? How much? How much? Five hundred. Good. Any other guesses? Thousand. Good job. Yeah, it's zero. I was given full financial aid, forty-three thousand seven six a year. That includes the cost of my tuition, room and board, books, health insurance, travel expenses, and personal expenses. Is he not impressed? Well, so guys, I was providing me free laptop and all expenses. Semester <laughs> abroad opportunity during my junior year. I think that was enough, right? Good. Okay, so how is this possible? If 50% securing students in plus two can get into US university with full scholarship or full financial aid, maybe half of Nepalese students would have already gone there, <laughs> right? But what's setting apart? The answer is hope. The hope is, hope is everything for me. Like in the video, it is the best thing I've ever felt in my life. Okay, let's hear my story. I'm going to start my story with a video. It's the video about where I was born. It's, about, it's the video about the reason I'm from, or where I have walked, actually.
okay, this is my release in Calico. And this is how I was when I was inside. Which one? Which one? Which one? I didn't have sneakers or something to wear on. I personally got that photo from someone else because I didn't have photo at all in this angle. Okay, so my mom told me I was born in the field when my mom was cutting grass for our law films. That's why they called me Brokers because I was born under the direct sunlight. Yeah, so when I was seven, my fa father was usually away from work and my brother fled to India. And they were just my mom and me to take care of the house and the cattle. And it used to be really tough because I used to work hard and so did my mom. Um, it used to be really worse. Like um, at other times it was just work like um, um, going to forest to collect wood, firewood, uh, I need to I needed to go uh, 30 minutes off hill to bring water. And similarly, I had to call grass, but during my mom's menstrual cycle, it used to be the worst. Why? Can anyone guess? Yeah, you don't want to ah, because I needed to take care of everything. Because the women who were in their menstrual cycle were not allowed to go near the house. Not even to toss the cattle, not even to touch us, not even to toss the utensils. They could do nearly nothing. This is you. This is had to stay in a hot build especially for them so it was really tough at that time for me and I really felt like I hit at home for the first time because um, because it was so tough at home right so in that phase of my life I felt life is hardship and pain and I desperately wanted to be away from them because I didn't like the way I was feeling pain Uh, then a year later, when I was around eight, I got, I got an opportunity to accompany my father and some neighbors to the nearest town to buy household items. After four days of walk, we could reach the nearest town. Uh, does anyone know Chishapani of Koilali? Yes. Good job. Yeah. Uh, it used to take four days for us to reach Chishapani of Koilali from where we used to buy our household stuff accenting with the key we have. So, uh, I was there after f four days, and then we boarded a bus and we went to Nepal Guns. So for the first time in my life, I saw huge roads with vehicles, people with nice, people with nice clothes, electricity bulbs. Oh, it was amazing. But it, it, didn't, caught, it didn't catch my attention at all. What caught my attention were the small children in tight uniform waiting in a queue to go into the bar to reach the school. I was staring at, at, that, at that time and when my father said to me, and at the same time I told my father I wanted to study. Um, and I asked him if I can study, because study somewhere else would mean I didn't have to do any hard work. It was just me studying, and it would be nice, nice clothes all the time. <laughs> And I insisted my father until he told me yes. And that was the turning point of my life. And uh, so at the age of eight, I was very fortunate to be admitted to a boarding school, English medium boarding school. It was the only one in the district at that time. Um, and I got admitted to a boarding school for the first time when I was at the age of eight. And at that time, I felt really happy because I didn't have to do any hard work. And at that time, I felt that you feel the greatest joy when you make, break free of what is holding you back and you strive forward with determination. Because my heart, my physical work was holding me back and I couldn't move forward at all. And it was not only the pain, it wouldn't let uh, me go anywhere in my life. But for the first time, I was getting free of those things. And I had hope now that now I can be something or someone. So I feel that you feel the greatest joy when you break break free of what is holding you back and you strive forward with determination. And I took determination, I need to study hard, no matter what. Okay, I think 
feeling I was feeling at that time, the thing I was breaking free of that was holding me was similar to a movie. I'm using some of the clips of movie in this station because I thought you would be bored with my story and you'd be very inspired with the video clips or you'd very enjoy it at least, right? So, this is how, how I felt at the time. Six years there, I never reached to a second. I was always the top. I was actually the school first boy. Whenever I used to like be on the way to school, there would be people or passers by near who would be saying school first boy or something like that. And I used to feel glad as well as sigh a bit because signage was a bit of my nature. And it, it is still is. Okay, so from that moment what I thought was like, as Aristotle told me. Not really me, don't tell me on TV. Yeah, or uh, as I read Aristotle's quote, something like this, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So I found the habit of studying hard. So hard that no one beat me and made me second in life. So this is my next appearance. This is how it was when I started starting the boarding school. I have nice clothes. Uh, I have a bit sad appearance because I sometimes miss my parents though. Because even if I was really happy, um, I couldn't like forget my parents. Um, so um, but as you know. Life is not always the bed of roses. It is the cycle of happiness and sadness. With every happy moment, there comes the sad moment hiding. So true success comes only when you consider sadness as a part of happiness and face the source of sadness with hope to bring back happiness. This is what I felt at the time. Because uh, when I reached at grade six, the school, only boarding school in Calcutta had to shut down because of Maoist incidents. Because one day they planted bombs in our school because they were against private schools, right? And then, after a few days, my dad came and started packing my clothes to take me home. But I, I told him, I want to study further. 
it was the time for me to decide whether to live to survive or whether to live to succeed. I had to choose whether to survive, whether to struggle for survive, or whether to succeed. Because at that time I knew if I go back to my village, mouse will come and take me away and make me Maoist. Because it was how, how it was in the village, right? Everyone knew that, right? And because I had felt that before too, uh, during holidays or during vacation, I used to go home and the mouse would come to me and they would pursue me with various things. They would give me like five, six books at a time to read so that I would be impressed and I would join them. But I was so young too. But so, I decided like, I told my father I didn't want to go home. I wanted to study any way. But my, family, my father told me like, I didn't have money at all. How, how are you going to study? Like somewhere else. And but I told him, how much effort you have given to me? I need to do something for, for myself. Because I had hope at that time. I was a topper. So I had hope one day definitely I would be someone. I would be someone contributing to society. Or someone standing in front of a lot of people. And talking about the hope, like today. Right? <laughs> OK. And so my father gave me some money. And I headed to Kathmandu alone. At the age of around 12. No, not really 12. 13, 14, I think. Yeah. I headed to Kathmandu alone. So when I reached Kathmandu, I was completely lost because I didn't know a lot of things here. And like this, like two days, there weren't mobile phones or means of communication at all. In our district also, there used to be 200 people waiting in a line to, uh, to have a time to talk to their relatives with only one phone booth there. And that was also later like disrupted because Mao is took the solar show. And so I was lost here. What what do I do? Like I didn't know any school here. And even if I go to school, like I need to go there and I need to talk about money and everything. I was completely lost. I, I thought like well, what, what should I do? And then my friends from Calicut who were studying here knew that I was here in Kathmandu. So the next day the principal of Kamali School came to pick me up. And without saying a word, I went with him. And then I stayed in his hostel till my tenth grade. And I was always offered full tuition waiver, full tuition scholarship, because I was again the topper every year till my tenth grade. Do you know in tenth grade what meant? It was the moment of my uh, success probably. It's not really college success because inside we usually do not call it success, right? But it still it is. When I was in 10th grade, I was awarded with Why My Hero of the Month with gas price 5,000 by Chowder Group, the largest business conglomerate of Nepal, for my excellent academic and extracurricular performance among the students of Nepal. So it was the best moment in life. And then, <laughs> and then I really proved myself or really thought if you decide to succeed, you definitely win, no matter what. So that was the lesson that I learned during the grade. Okay, after SLC, I joined A levels. SLC International Academy offered me 80% of scholarship in admission and tuition fees. Um, so, after getting admitted to Chelsea International Academy, I told my father, so I'm good to now, so I heard like, USA gives a scholarship, to, a scholarship to international students, even if they don't have money. So I shared my dream with my father. I also want to go to the US and study under a scholarship. And he was really glad, he, he was really delighted with joy because he never thought a villager's son would talk about such a probability one day, or such a possibility one day. But I didn't know the greatest strategy of my life was it to happen. It was the time of sadness in my cycle again. In my life cycle, it was the time of sadness again. This time a bigger sadness, which means I have to struggle harder to come out of it. Actually, what happened? After just one year of my A-levels, um, I went home during Dossi, and I enjoyed it my, with my family. But after a month, I got called from my relatives 
your father is paralyzed here. You need to come and take, take him somewhere um, to, take, to take him to a hospital. I was, I, I was puzzled. Was it a dream, really? Because I stayed with my dad, and we enjoyed just a month ago, and now, how, how come it happened? And then I knew, like, when he was working as a D-class contractor at the Karnali Highway, the newly built highway, a fast rolling stone hit his spine. And he was immediately paralyzed. So, it was the next challenge for me. So I went home, brought my father, took him to India for treatment. Um, I stayed there for around two months, then the doctor told him, now he's going to be better. Yeah, he's getting better. Bring him up to two months. And I was happy again because my father was getting better. So I took him home, um, uh, and my uncle was also with him, so he took care of him at home. And I came back to Capital because I needed to get into my studies. If I didn't study harder, I would not achieve my goal because that was the only option left for me. But after 22 days, I got a call that your father passed away and you need to be at home immediately. And so I left home, and I reached home at 1 p.m. alone at night. Because in our place, it used to be scared of ghosts and everything, but I didn't know how the cars came to me. And I was fainted there. And anyway, I, I needed to like survive, and I needed to do something. But the worst was it to come. Immediately after my father's conversation, my mom started to get really bad chest pain. She used to cough all the time, and she wouldn't sleep at night at all. And that was even worse. So I brought her immediately to Kathmandu. And I took her to different hospitals and finally to Mangala. And to my dismay, she was diagnosed with RSD, rheumatic heart disease. Her two valves in her heart needed to be changed immediately to make her survive which was almost impossible because her heart, her heart was so weak, it couldn't bear the surgery. So, after six months of the death of my father, my mom passed away when she was leaning on my shoulder. And that was again the saddest part of my life. And so, I cried for a few days. Then, I thought about hope. And, Without being away from nine months to school, I couldn't achieve more. I failed the exam again. But I came out to be with the grades that I mentioned to you. I did perform well. I was no more a doctor, no more a student who worked that me. Then I decided to go back to my home. And immediately at home, because I, even if I was not the doctor at that time, not the best performer, I still had the vision that whatever I do, I need to do the best. And there was no thing to be scared about. One thing I've learned in life is you need to do everything until and unless it hurt. It doesn't hurt anyone. If anything doesn't hurt anyone, you are free to do everything your heart wants. You shouldn't be doing anything that hurts others. That was only the problem. So I went to Metiskip District Headquarters and I publicized everywhere. Uh, it was the time when SLC students used to fail a lot, especially in English, and it was the supplementary uh, exam time. I, I publicize reduction classes. Uh, if you if you're not going to pass, you get your money back. If you pass, pay me the fee. And then I have said one hundred seventy students at that time and all of them passed. I was the most sought after tutor in the district. I couldn't handle the money that I, I'd be getting at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but neither tutor, tutoring was my destiny, nor making money was. I wanted to go to the US. Or I wanted to study hard further so that I would contribute to society later. Then I quit tutoring after around six months and I went back to my village because I wanted to do really something worthy to people. So at that time, the whole inside me was not dead, though it just needed some time and patience to rise again. At that time, Mahabir Kun was my real inspiration. When Mahavir Kun from remote Nagi village and Nagi could go to the U.S. on a scholarship, drive years after finishing his high school, why couldn't I wait? I'm brave. 
low grade question has ever become great without overcoming obstacles and fashion challenges. And it was the time of my fashion challenges. And I decided to wait for 10 years before I go to the US. So, since I was not really uh, wanting to go to the US right then, because there was no possibility at all, I had to be patient. And I thought I need to do something for my, for my village because I have no boundary at all. I didn't, I didn't need to do anything for anyone. I didn't have my parents. My parents spent a lot for me, but when I was able to do something, they were wearing my people, wearing my parents. And there was no one else that I would matter really much. So I decided to do something for the village. At least some people would be, would be happy there. So I decided to open a service-oriented English medium school in, in my village, right there. Because at that time, like, Rosh Prabhu was already solved. So I decided to open an English medium school there because I struggled a lot to start in English medium school. But still, after like around 12, 14 years, when I went to my village, I still saw the children who were like the same when I was like around 10, 12 years back. They were still playing with the mod. They were still doing the same thing that I used to do during my childhood. There were no improvement at all. It was still the same. It had been a decade, but there were no change at all. So I thought at least my DC system would help a bit, even if I couldn't do, do a lot. So I decided to open a school, but I decided to open a school for the poor and disadvantaged. But this school would not be a normal school. It would have the modern facilities, modern means of communication, and the modern way of learning. So for the first time in Calicut, we chartered a public private helicopter to take solar panels, computers, um, this TV, and other materials there. So that is the ground of our school, and this is the helicopter I was in the cockpit, but not uh, using the handle floor, as next to the pilot. So I took this photo from my phone. And there were people like coming to see the helicopter for the first time, because they hadn't even uh, seen the helicopter in front of their eyes. So when the helicopter landed, people came to touch it. And some people went inside, and it was equal to come to the crowd. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, we started like uh, this school, and it took around a year to get the government, government like, uh, um, license or something, because we needed to get an appointment from government to open a school. And then we started it. It was a very short time, but uh, it was really hectic too, because I needed to do something very soon. There was no time to wait and think like I'll do it later. And so this was the first like few days after we won this school. There are solar panels, TV, and we made compulsory for students to have at least one TV lesson a day. We used to screen Animal Planet or Discovery Channel because our people didn't know anything at all beyond, beyond the village. For them, world was like the village. And so students were really surprised. They, they would tell their, their parents at home, Oh, there was a big snake there in the school today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they, they would be telling about the cars, bus, everything um, to their parents. So this is how it was. Like, the teachers, there is me standing there. You can see uh, what is not clear. I need to practice it there. So, so the dance competition among the students. Uh, I'm sorry, students getting ready for local Devra dance. Does anyone know Devra dance here? Yeah. It's from the western part of the college and it's very famous there, right? And, um, and a year later, I could get $40,000 temporary loan to build first concrete school in the whole district. And so we made it because we needed some more rooms. And can you see me there? The one with black, oh, not black, maybe blue jacket. Right? I was not like this at that time. Now, it's my time now, so I need to be something. Right? I don't need to be afraid of anything because I've achieved everything now. At least everything, not everything, really. <laughs> yeah. So, that was me tutoring. Like, we students studying extended hours with teachers in winter. In winter, since our is Himalayan region, we have a lot of snow falling there, so we could, can't stay inside. Like, it's too cold, so. Um, after four o'clock, like, we would be like supervising some weekly students so that they could at least pass in the exam. Like, all the teachers are guiding the students there. Um, so this was the first computer there. Um, so 
and these are students and teachers would come on Saturday to, to watch TV, to watch movies and computer and stuff like that. And this was our computer lab. Later we had like seven computers there. Uh, we tried to get like satellite internet from NTC, uh, but unfortunately we couldn't get it. So all we needed to start from there was with the sky data. Uh, sky data is uh, from like no, it's there. Uh, no, from NTC, right? So that is uh, that is how I came out to like develop the school there. So, why I established this school where was because like there were students in the village were very poor, some were very poor, some were like uh, not even have food to eat. We wanted to like we wanted to uh, uh, give a lesson to the public like we shouldn't be just uh, struggling to survive. We should let the students to succeed. We shouldn't teach them to survive. We should let them to succeed. Uh, one of the students that I like uh, selected was. My student that never like fades away from my mind. Um, when he was three three months old in in, a, in his mom's home, his father died of it. And when uh, her mother gave birth to him, her mother went mad. She used to take him all the way to the mountains and try to kill kill him. And uh, when he was finally like. Three months was alive, not in the home right now. Now, when he, he was like three months old after birth, he was rescued by his relatives, and he was staying in his relatives' house then. So, I picked one, I picked that student, and I provided like close to where like school dress, um, like the books and everything, and we studied for free there. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have his picture right here. I think. And there was another girl who, who fell down from her rooftop and uh, her like uh, legs were like crippled, but her parents did not bother to take her to a hospital because at that time hospital was far away too. So later she couldn't walk, otherwise if she would give treatment, she, she would walk. But later what happened was she again fell from the bed because of the same reason and she was permanently like handicapped later. And no one bothered to teach her. She was not even sent to school. I even picked her to like um, to our school, and I, I gave everything to her too. So it was our hope, like one day we'll be we'll be educating a lot of these kind of children because the rose finally rises in the rose. No, not the rose. Well, lotus, lotus finally like rises well. It grows in the mud, right? Yeah, so we're supposed to pick those students. Ah, um, yeah. So after working here for three three years, um, I had local people to manage it. Because it was not my destiny again. Because my destiny was something else. I was hopeful like one day I go to the US, I started there. And then I made a plan to do something here. But being in school was not my destiny. And some because of the work I have done, some people used to come me, please be the cop, please be the teacher here in our high school. At that time, the people would think like the government job would be their destiny. If you get government job, then that's everything to you. You don't need to do anything else in your life. If you can, you don't even need to go into school. You just be the, be the teacher here and stay here. That's all. But that is not my destiny. I wanted to study further. I wanted to go forward. I wanted to succeed. But that is just the example like what I what I could do. It was kind of experiment in my life. But it was not my destiny. So after three years, like I um, helped local people to manage it, and then I had to happen to see if my hope was going into reality. Just to say. And at that time, like people made me discouraged, like um, he was talking inside of them. Now it's, it's like this. So some people said that too, because no one always makes you happy all the time, right? So, but as I was really committed to my dream. I really wanted to so do something. My hope was really powerful inside. I didn't have to wait for years, but ultimately I would go to the dream that I ever dreamt. At that time, like this video was really inspirational to me. Okay, raise up your hand where I was pursuit of happiness. Wow, pretty lot. Good job. Yeah, so it's a clip from 
but should have happiness maybe like some of you who have already watched you did not find it interesting but others can find it interesting it's about the dream how you can make a dream into a reality how you need to be patient or something like that when and here there's Willie Smith and his son like they, they discuss about our dream Willie Smith first wants to discourage his son and uh, later teach him a lesson so that he would learn better that's one City scanner, how about that? Wanna do that? No. Hey, Dad, a golden crow! <laughs> a golden crow! Oh, oh! Okay. Yeah. I don't know, you know why? Uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. I was so, whoa. So you're probably all really great. Somewhere around there, you know, so really, you know, excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. All right? All education 
more accessible to, to the poor people. And I want to um, create a belief in international community to share a belief in the whole. That's what I think before I leave. I want to say you uh, some Paulo Coelho's words. Does has anyone read Paulo Coelho's book? Alchemist at least, right? Yeah. Uh, these are these Circumstances and the environment influence our lives, but we are the ones responsible for ourselves. That no matter in how many pieces your heart is broken, the world doesn't stop to fix it. When the door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed one, we don't see what is open for us. So find what can make your heart smile. Dream what you want. When you were born, you were crying and everyone around you was smiling. Live your life so that when you die, you are the one that is smiling and everyone around you is crying. So, uh, this is the final video. I'm not going into it because we are short of time now. Uh, so, this is my uh, university there. So, maybe this is in America, California, USA. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. And this is how it is during like evening time. So thanks everyone for being President's welcome reception, and I was one of them. Yeah, but because of the presentation, like I, I have like added some more uh, inspirable uh, like words and inspirable lines. But uh, if I had to write to like uh, application, then I've been uh, using so, so much of things because they will think that I've been factoring. So if you want to see my action, like you're ready to. Um, I'm ready to give it to you. I didn't mind at all because it's, it's nothing bad or something like that. If you can learn something from me, that's that's perfectly good. So what you can do is like um, either I can leave the essay here, or uh, or you can just email me and um, I, I I can send it send it to you too. It's, it doesn't have very good words though. It's very plain, but it's the real story of my life. So what matters is the reality. And Selena Ma also told me the same thing. The thing in you is. Uh, you have authentic wars and authentic events of your life. That's what matters to admission officers. Yeah, and a person you know, I think that really makes a huge difference. 
what we are going through life and what the real journey. I think that will make a difference. Um, yeah, I also think so. Like, <laughs> um, I was not really sure, but uh, what you is, I didn't apply to very good colleges, right? I didn't apply to Harvard, MIT, or any Ivy League colleges because I didn't want to go there too. Because I just have more good grades, and I want to be in a surrounding where I would be the top, or not when I would be lost, lost or not. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have things to lack too. And well, I would just be frustrated and I would think I wouldn't be satisfied there, right? Maybe I can do better and go to graduate school in Harvard or somewhere. Let's know how it goes. I think we're running out of time. Now, okay. One or two last questions. You're welcome to ask. I know you have more questions. Okay, sure. Uh, would you mind posting it to the year since there's no work there? Yeah, sure. That's that's a very good option. Well, how many students here are from Office Funding 2014? One? Yeah. That's a good platform. Yeah, I can do that. It's straight out today. Yeah, you got it. Others, you can just, uh, if you want to get it, like, I can give you the email address too. So, I can have a place to write. So, yeah. if you can just send me this. Yeah, brocast.vista311 at gmail.com. You can just mail me and then you can get it. All this for later is PRKSS dot PRKSS Procast dot BIST Vista 111 at Zimbabwe. How many Sorry? 331, yeah. Okay, thank you so much for attending. It was really inspirable for me to see you. Please.